on today's Techno Babble. Eight video mistakes that pastors make. This is Tech No Babble, your weekly source for church video and graphics news, perspectives, tips, and tricks. And now here's your host, Paul Clifford. Hi, everyone, and welcome again to another episode of Tech No Babble. I, of course, am your host, Paul Allen Clifford, and I'd love for you to join the conversation. I turned down my studio sound here. I'd love for you to join the conversation. So head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash contact, and you can leave a message there. Questions, comments, snide remarks are, of course, appreciated. Well, maybe not so much the snide remarks. Or you can use any of the contact information you find there, like my phone number, one eight seven seven pod echo one eight seven 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 six three three two four six, or you can drop me a line on email. Let's say you're an email person, no problem. Paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com, or you might know that I've written a little book about Twitter. I say little; it's not like one of these e pamphlets. It's a real book. Um, so you might think, hey, don't you have a Twitter handle? Yes, I do. It's Paul Allen Cliff, P-A-U-L-A-L-A-N-C-L-I-F. And um, you can reach me there, and um, I'd be happy to interact with you, along with the 23,830 other people that I have. But I would love for you to be there as well. Speaking of people, I want to thank the viewers like you who are supportive of the show by going to patreon.com slash Cliff. For as little as a dollar a month, you can support the show and just help make all this possible. I won't belabor the point, but I will say it's very helpful when people do that. So let's talk about the video mistakes that a pastor can make. Here's um, just some stuff that I've noticed over the years that are mistakes that can be made and sometimes fixes that haven't been made. So let's talk about that, shall we? Uh, Number one, doing it all yourself. Um, Maybe I ought to back up and say there is a ninth mistake, and that is not doing video at all for bad reasons. Now, it could be that you've got very good reasons not to do video at all, but if you're using it, these eight reasons, or these eight mistakes are things that you can do. So, number one is doing it all yourself. I know that in a small church, it's easy to think there's no one else but me, so I better do it all myself. I worked in a small church for several months when I was in seminary, and the pastor was also the secretary, typed up the bulletin, printed it up, did everything. And I really think that there was probably someone else who could have helped. But he just assumed that no one else would. So... That's the way that it is. You might find that the people that can help you with this are the most shy. It's not necessarily the case, but I've seen quite a lot of shy people that are involved in technology and videography and other areas. So it might be that they're not evident, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. So if you can get someone to help you with this, this will just exponentially increase your ability to do this. Number two, calling attention to mistakes. Quick story, I was in, I was working for a church probably about 10, 11 years ago, and when I was doing this, there was a bad mic, like it wasn't working for whatever reason. And so there was only a single audio person. When the 
Mike refused to work, she was busily trying to figure out what was wrong. She was unmuting things. She was checking connections, everything. Then there was the leader of the music team, who was also the pastor's wife, uh, ran up there uh, singing, Here I Come to Save the Day, and handed another mic to the person who needed it. Then came back and really tore into the audio person, who was a volunteer, and it really hurt to watch because that, that was one of my people. I was in charge of her, and I saw her trying to fix the problem. It's not that she wasn't fixing the problem. It's that she hadn't finished fixing the problem when someone else decided to fix it for her and then tore into her for not fixing it. I saw tears flowing down their cheeks, and uh, it's because when... People are in tech, generally they don't want to be seen. They don't want to be noticed. And just the thought that this person was pointed out and just the, the person who pointed it out wasn't nice about it. It just was bad. Okay. Number three, not taking input from the video team. Pastors, you think pastoral thoughts all week. I can't speak for everyone, but I know for myself, I think video thoughts all week. I put more time thinking into how to make things better, how to improve them, uh, innovative ways of doing things that we haven't thought of than most people in the world. And that's just me, but I suspect that a lot of your team do the same thing. I suspect that the amount of time that you put into a sermon and prep, a lot of them put a similar amount of time into trying to figure out better ways to do that. So if they say, hey pastor, that houndstooth coat that you like wearing, it causes problems on the camera, please listen. If they say, you know, when you hold up something and you say take a shot of it and then you move it, it's harder to take a shot of, please listen. There are things that they have noticed that they don't want to ridicule you. They want you to be better. So listen when they make a suggestion. Don't just decide that, no, they don't know what they're talking about and dismiss it. That's really not helpful to you at all. Next, focusing on design as well as content. Now, what I mean by this is I've seen a lot of pastors that will make all their slides, design them all themselves, and send them to the team and say, don't change anything, do it as is. But a lot of times the team knows a better way to do it, but you've just cut off the better way. You've said, the design is as important as the the design is as important as the content and i guess think of it this way uh, when you have a web designer you want them to design what the website looks like not write the content there's someone totally different that will do that they're just totally different disciplines. As the pastor, the content is what you should be focusing on. You shouldn't be saying, oh, here we go, I've made this, it looks great on my computer, so therefore it'll look great in the room, because that may or may not be the case. Design is what matters for the people creating the technical side of things. The content is what matters for you. So. Focus on the content. Provide some feedback on the design, but let people who are designers do the design and let the people that are the content people create the content. That's a good rule just across the board. Next, calling for slides that don't exist. Now this is all about communication. 
So one thing that I've seen more than once is in an earlier draft, a slide exists. Then we get to the final draft and the slide does not exist. That's really not helpful. It either needs to exist or not exist. Not the, it doesn't exist in a later draft and you forget that. Make sure you're communicating to yourself, to anyone who's helping you out, and to your team if something exists or not. And keep that the same. Make sure just because you had an idea earlier and wrote it down, if the final draft doesn't have it, don't call for it. And make sure that your team has the final draft. Make sure it's communicated across the board. My pastor says it all comes down to leadership. So lead because your team wants to do a good job, but they can't do a good job if there's a miscommunication. So do your best to communicate as best as possible because this will, in effect, call attention to a mistake. So it's better not to make a big deal of a slide coming up and then it doesn't come up and then you just make a mental note, okay, something went wrong, let's address that later and then move on, then to say, take a look at this slide. This slide, the up there, that slide that isn't there. Okay, we'll move on. Why isn't that slide there? See, that's no good. That's no good at all. That's calling attention to a mistake. And it's also, notice how pointing out something that's not there yet leaves the potential for that to be a mistake if something had gone awry. If a computer had crashed, if any number of things had happened. So pointing out something that isn't there is probably a problem. It's better to point out something that is. Next, not understanding resolution. My pastor and his uh, assistants have gotten much better at this, but in the early days, they'd find a picture and they'd say, hey, this is perfect, let's use this. And the picture was like 150 pixels by 100 pixels. I mean, it was a minuscule postage stamp size picture. And when we put it full screen on the screen, it looked all fuzzy and, oh, it's horrible. So ask your team to explain the minimum resolution that you need for your screen. It's probably going to be at least, at least 800 by 600, bare minimum. And it's important that you know which is which, because the wide resolution tends to be the larger number. So if you get a uh, 600 by 800 image, that's going to give you something totally different from an 800 by 600. And again, that's bare minimum there's a good chance it's going to be much larger. So if you find a picture that's perfect, but it's a postage stamp size, know, to, know that it's going to look fuzzy and make a decision based on that. If you find something that's almost as good and has enough resolution for your screen, then that's the one that I think I would go for, if at all possible. So understanding resolution is really important when you're finding pictures. Next, pushing for something too early. I hear a lot of times about churches that say, yes, we're gearing up for video streaming. And then you talk to them and they say, yes, we found a web camera that will do what we needed to do. So first off, they have a web camera instead of multiple. Secondly, it's a web camera instead of a production camera. That's just causing for asking for trouble. And usually it's because they're not willing to spend any more money. So they're, maybe they don't have it to spend, and that's, that's permissible. But maybe it's that 
they say, yes, our budget is $100 for live video streaming our service. Things are getting less expensive. The camera that I'm using is less than $100 right now, but the software I'm using to stream is $500. The computer I'm using to stream is, when I bought it, about $1,200. So it's not the case that you can just cut off two zeros off a price of what you need and say, no, I'm sure we can make do. Please, if you're not ready for it, make it a goal, save up, do what it takes to get ready, but don't, don't say, Ah, well, it doesn't really matter if we have a microphone that actually works. Actually, that matters more than anything. It doesn't matter that I need a webcam that has a 10x optical zoom. Because, by the way, they don't make those. A webcam with that much zoom would show your nose hairs. That's bad. So, just keep in mind... you. There are limitations, and if it's too early, it's too early. Just save up, start planning. If you don't have the manpower, start recruiting. Don't just run in like a bull in a china shop and assume that it'll work out when actually not so much. It's not my heart for you that you don't use technology. You should know that. It's my heart for you that you do the best you can with what you have, and if you don't have the bare minimum, that you wait a little while until you do. And number eight, the last thing that I've seen pastors do that's a huge mistake is doing video just because another church is doing it. If, if another church is doing it, it's not that it's a bad idea necessarily. But it could be that it's not yet the right time for you, or it could be that it's not a good fit for your congregation. So if you're a church of 100 people, doing IMAG because Willow Creek does is a bad choice. It just is, unless all 100 people of those are, you know, 100 feet from the stage. If they're far away where IMAG would be helpful, then that's one thing. But most of the time, that's not the case. Most of the time, it's, I saw this big church that did this other thing, and I want to do it now. Oh, yeah, I know that they spent a million dollars for all their equipment. Let's see what we can do with 10. Not 10 million, by the way, $10. That's, no. Really, trust me on this. We want to do a good job and when you're working with the cheapest equipment possible it's like dancing with a partner who keeps stepping on your feet. When you're working with broadcast quality gear and your people have the training to use it right it's like dancing a waltz with Ginger Rogers. She's better at it than you because she's doing everything the same as you just in reverse and in high heels. I mean, really, it's, it's just better. Now, keep in mind, people tend to make the difference between good and great. So you can take in someone who's never held a video camera, give them a $20,000 camera, and they're not going to get good results. You can take someone who is a videographer and give them a $500 camera and you'll get better results than the person who's never touched a camera that's uh, that's given the really expensive gear. But you want to increase both. You want to increase the training of your people and you want to increase the abilities of your equipment together so that the the people that are using the equipment don't bump into its limitations and so that the people themselves can use the equipment without going, 
Uh, I keep forgetting to focus. I really wish there was autofocus on this $20,000 ENG camera. So you need to increase both of those. So what about you? What have I left out? What are the mistakes you've made if you're a pastor? What are the mistakes your pastor made of, might have made? I really hope that you'll... Uh, I don't mean this as a gripe fest against pastors. What I mean it as is let me help you get better. And so I'm addressing this as to pastors, even though technically, typically my audience is the tech people. So tech people, if you're watching this, why not give it to your pastor and say, hey, Paul over at Trinity Digital Media, I was listening to his podcast or watching this video on YouTube, and he was pointing out some mistakes that I think we can get better at. So pastors, if you've gotten this video or hear the audio, from your team, it's not because they're trying to tell you you're horrible at your job. It's because they want to get better and they want you to get better. So that together, as a team, you all in your church can go out and change eternity. Until next time, I'm Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.